guys, what's up? It's the Chinchilla Notebook here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to prepare wood for chinchillas. Um, I've been saying I would do this video for the longest time, so I thought I would just get it over with. I'm very, I'm a very big procrastinator when it comes to this, but if you guys didn't know, I do prepare Merlin's own wood. We have a whole yard full of trees back there, so most of them are healthy for chinchillas. And in this video, I will be showing you how to prepare willow wood, but um, you can you can do it from any kind of tree that's safe for chinchillas. So yeah, this tutorial, it's not a very long, I mean, not, not a very complicated process, but it is kind of long, so it'll take a good hour or two hours out of your day, day maybe. But um, there's a lot of steps where you have to wait for something to happen. Anyway, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, so first off, you're going to need to start with um, some good sticks from outside. So I got these all from a willow tree. I was looking in my um, apple tree, but I couldn't find anything, any branches that weren't bearing fruit at this time of year, and I don't want to take those. You want to avoid branches that are green. If you strip off the bark a little bit and it's still green in, uh, underneath, those are not good. They're going to rot really fast, even if you do bake them. So uh, stay away from those. And also try always to pick a good kind of um, of wood. I have a whole video on safe and bad chinchilla woods, <laughs> woods for chinchillas. Um, so I will link that down below if I can. But basically you just want to stick with the good stuff. And if somebody in your neighborhood ha has a willow tree or an apple tree or I don't know, there's, there's a long list of good trees for chinchillas, good trees with wood that's safe for them. And so you can just watch that video and then wander around your neighborhood or ask your friends, ask your family, uh, relatives, anybody who might have some of these trees that are good for them, chinchillas, and then go and check the tree to make sure how the branches look because like I said, if they're green underneath the bark, they're not good. So I just cut these with some pliers off my willow tree. And um, when you do that, you want to make sure that you don't like to the visible eye you want to make sure you don't get any that have bugs on them or bug eggs underneath the bark or anything like that um you want to stay fairly safe wow this whole thing's peeling off and merlin loves to chew the bark off and i'm doing that for him right now um but merlin loves to chew the bark off so i tried to get a lot with bark on it but basically you're just going to go out first and just cut some branches off and this is what I did and I actually have a really good set of little mini pliers that are meant to cut wood but I lost them. I use them every single time I make Merlin some wood and I don't know where they are. So basically um, with a pair of pliers you're just going to cut the wood at the different sizes and lengths that you want. I chose wood that have different thicknesses, like this is thicker, this is thinner, you know, just different sizes. And what you're gonna do is just cut them at the size you want. If you want short ones, cut short ones. If you want long ones, cut longer one, cut, cut longer ones. I mean, apparently I can't talk today. So this is all up to you. That's like really, that's the thing about making your own wood is that you can choose whatever you want, customize whatever you want. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm actually going to use my hands because I'm not a very good YouTuber and I don't have the right tools right now because I lost it. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just cut the, I just, well, rip this one like this. And you may, you don't want to have too sharp edges because it might hurt your chinchilla. But um, yeah, so you're just going to basically do that and just make a whole pile of them. So like I said, as short or as long as you want, anything pretty much works, as long as you like it. So when you've got all of them cut to the size that you want, if there's any buds on them, like little green buds on them, you want to cut those off, but most most likely whatever you use, uh, wood you have will not have buds if, um, if they're not green, because if they have buds, that means they're growing. You don't want growing trees. So um, this willow is very old, these branches, that's why they're really like dry already. Um, 
So what we're going to do with these is just basically any bark that, you know, you don't want to strip the bark off because chinchillas and pet animals like rabbits and guinea pigs typically like doing like doing that themselves. But for bark like this that just kind of like are already falling off, you don't want to leave on because when you boil them, it's going to come off anyway. So you just want to take off the, the stuff that comes off easily. And for example, like this willow, this bark's not coming off anytime soon, but this one does. So you have an option either to get rid of these or just go along with them. So when you're happy with your selection and there's no weird odds and ends, this one is actually shaped really weirdly, but I like it because Merlin might have fun with it. So um, when you're done with these, you're going to start boiling them when you're happy with your little collection here. So it may be a little loud in here and I forgot this step, but what you want to do before you boil them the sticks you want to take a, a toothbrush or like an old but clean toothbrush you don't want to use like a, well I guess a brand new toothbrush but you don't want to use one that someone has used before basically a, a toothbrush or any other type of brush this is just not focusing is it all right so this is the one I use for Merlin's wood all the time so yeah and then I'm just here with a sink and I'm just gonna start scrubbing them this like scrubbing them like this you'll see how I do it just to get anything that's dirty off them all the dust and dirt and grime and anything that might be on them because these are from outside so that's what I'm gonna do right now washed all of the sticks here I'm just going to be boiling them oh I have a light right here so I'm just going to be boiling them in this hot pan I usually don't do it this way I just put a glass of water a pyrex dish into the microwave for two minutes and then boil them in like that but this actually works a lot better it really boils them so what I'm going to be doing is just sticking all the sticks inside here and as you can see they do float and I'll get to that just in a second but you just want to stick all the sticks in here. Ooh, okay. So the reason why we do this is because we want to boil off all the germs and bacteria before baking and giving them to our chinchilla. We take I take a lot of steps to make sure that they are sanitary and not unsafe. So this is just another one of them. I'm gonna be using this little spatula here because water's kind of hot just to um, push them in. And in the longer ones, as you can see, this one doesn't dunk in all the way. These top ones, so you're just gonna have to flip them over after they've cooked for a while but you just want to boil them you don't want to overdo it so that the wood is soggy but you just want to do it so that the bacteria comes off this happens fairly quickly and once you've let them be good on one side we're going to switch them over like that so that all the ends have had a chance to soak in the hot water also, when you wash them with a toothbrush or brush or whatever you're using never use soap don't use any soap at any time just wash them with plain water and scrub them. So now that they're done boiling, I just laid them out on a towel and you want to do this so that they dry. Um, before you put them in the uh, oven, you want them to dry really well. So uh, apart from that, they're all finished boiling and nice and clean. Um, I lined a pan. This is a like a really dirty old pan that my mom doesn't want to use to cook. So what I do with this is I just um, use this purely for Merlin when I make treats for him or prepare wood. And I just lined it with some foil. Now I'm just going to preheat my oven. So I'll just, oh, okay. I obviously don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to bake it at 350. It doesn't really matter what temperature you choose to, but it's just going to preheat now. So I they're done drying and I just placed them in here. So when you place them in the pan, you want you want you want to be uh, sure that they don't touch each other. I mean, obviously they're gonna touch each other. So yeah, I, can't, I don't really know why I said that, but you want to minimize as much as you can how much they touch. Like you don't want them to be like crisscrossed over each other because you want them to cook pretty well. So this is just how they look right now, and the heat just has 10 more degrees. So I'm just gonna stick it in there. And hopefully I don't burn my hand. Okay, so for the first trial, I just like to set it for 15 minutes. So I let these uh, bake for about 15 minutes exactly. I didn't put it any more or any less. Basically how you'll know when they're done is when the bark starts to wrinkle a little bit like this, 
um, you'll know when they're done. These ones didn't really leave any sap in here, but that's not a bad thing or a good thing, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> but uh, basically, you'll know by the way they look. Also, when the smell, I don't know what kinds of ovens you guys have, but when the smell starts getting really strong, that's when you also know they're done. So you don't want to overdo them. But just enough so that the, I don't know if you can see this, but the skin wrinkles a little bit. So they're done and this is what they look like. They've cooled down and everything. So I'm just going to feed one to Merlin and show you guys how he likes them. But basically you just want to store them in an airtight container like this. If you expose them to air, they have more of a chance of um, going that well. I don't know. I had some batches of woods where I accidentally took fresh wood and wood that was still green underneath. He's making a lot of noise. Um, wood that was still green underneath and they like molded inside the container. But these should be fine if you bake them right. Um, so yeah, just store them in an airtight container. They last a long time. You can drill holes in them, make them into kebabs. You can do whatever you want with them. And I just throw one in for Merlin sometimes and he really likes them. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this helped you if you decided you wanted to do this or you wanted to try it. Oh my goodness, Marilyn, where have you gone? Oh, this is kind of a fail. Anyway, I don't even know if you guys can see him. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I helped you out. I might have been a little bit like randomly airheaded this video. Sorry if I made things unclear, but um, yeah. This is the finished outcome and you guys wanted to know how I made them, so this is how I make them. And I will see you guys next Monday.